Now, this is one that hits people pretty hard sometimes, but it's just the truth and it's the reality of business is that if you're not making six figures per year, if you're making 50K per year, you are a $50,000 per year entrepreneur. I started out as a brand new agent with less than $5,000 to my name, like many, a broke new agent. And five years later, I was making multiple seven figures per year as a licensed real estate agent. And I want to share for the first time ever, the 14 life lessons that I learned that allowed me to go from being broke in a new city who didn't know anybody with no experience to now impacting thousands of agents per year, being able to bring some of my family's dream vacations and experiences to life and be able to create fulfillment of my own life and achieve every single thing that was on my vision board five years ago. So without further ado, let's dive into it and share the fundamental principles that I don't really see anybody else talking about that genuinely will completely change the trajectory of not just your business, but also your life. What's up guys? My name is Mike Sherwood with eXp Realty and I train thousands of agents every year to skyrocket their business, leveraging social media. And this is going to be a video that if you stay to the end and listen to each of these 14 points, it genuinely can change your business and your life forever. So I want you to not just just look for the next tip, trick, or strategy, but rather focus on these key principles that I'm gonna share with you because no matter what tip, trick, or strategy you look for, if you don't understand these principles, they will never lead you to the seven-figure business and dream lifestyle that you likely have. And I wanna make sure that you get there as quickly as possible. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first one is focusing on one thing at a time is the only way to build massive momentum. I train thousands of new agents every year. And one of the things that I commonly hear is that the distracted, they're overwhelmed because the man who chases two rabbits catches none. If you're trying to do too many things at once, it's nearly impossible for you to become excellent at something. So what you'll see is any agent that's gone on to build a seven figure per year business has done it becoming the master at one thing. And the caveat to that is anything can work. I know agents that are making seven figures per year from door knocking, cold calling, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. It does not matter but they all are the master at something. So it's the typical quote, you want to be a master of something, not a jack of all trades. And that's where a lot of agents fall short is that if you could take all of that distracted time and focus and channel it into one thing, that's gonna allow you to move the needle of your business. So for me, in the beginning, I started with door knocking and the only thing I did was all in on door knocking. Then I understood the importance of creating leverage. So I went all in on Facebook ads and became the master of that. And then once I started, to understand the power of organic content, I went all in on YouTube. Now, while you are dabbling in a couple of other things just to keep your business going, you have to put the majority of your focus into one thing because what you'll see is that usually the majority of your business is going to come from one thing that you're doing. And if you channel all of your effort into that one thing and become a master of it and understanding the principle that if you spend a hundred hours on one certain activity, you become 95% better than the the rest of the industry. So my first piece of advice is to pick one thing, whether it be a traditional prospecting or the more modern side of things, leveraging social media and do whatever it takes every single day to develop your skill set so that you can become the best at that one thing. The second thing is that delayed gratification will completely eliminate disappointment. One of the things that I see people do and go wrong with is they'll hear that, for example, like I talk about all the time, YouTube is one of the best ways to generate clients and they will try it for a month or three months, not get a client, they're somewhat consistent. And then after that, they say, you know what? Somebody else got a client within a month or three months. I didn't, it's not for me, it's not gonna work. And they're on to the next thing. And then they go on to TikTok and then they try TikTok for one to three months. Don't get a client, don't get the followers or the views. Okay, I'm on to Facebook ads. And they jump from thing to thing to thing. So what happens is oftentimes on YouTube or wherever you're learning from, you're hearing the unicorn stories. The person that got their million dollar listing in the first week, in the first month, their first client on YouTube in the first month, whatever that looks like. And you're not measuring yourself to that, which is an instant gratification perspective. Whereas if you look at the agents that I've featured on my YouTube channel and my personal approach to YouTube, was if I tell you that 
you could get a client within the first three months and you don't get one within three months, you're probably going to get disappointed. Well, let's extend the time horizon a little bit. Let's say I told you you need to commit to this for one year. If you don't get a client within three months, you might be slightly disappointed, but you're not going to give up because you still got nine more months left. Well, let's say I told you to commit to YouTube for 10 years. Well, if you didn't get a client within the first three months, do you think you'd care in any way, shape or form? Probably not because you've still got nine and three quarter years left. Let's say you do what I did and every single success story I've ever created on YouTube has done, which is I'm going to do this forever because if you can't do it for a lifetime, don't do it for a day. Can you imagine saying I've got 20, 30 more years left in my career and I'm going to be doing YouTube every single week for the next 20, 30 years. If you don't get a client in three months, do you think that will phase you in the slightest? And you know the answer to that, which is no. So the further you can extend the time horizon for which you're expecting tangible results, there's no way to ever get disappointment because you're committing to a proven process just saying, hey, it's not a matter of if it's going to work out, it will. It's just a matter of when it's going to work out. And that's one of the best things you can do for any aspect of your business is embrace delayed gratification, extend the time horizon, and just commit consistently to a proven process. Number three, your income is a direct reflection of the entrepreneur or realtor that you've become. Now, this is one that hits people pretty hard sometimes, but it's just the truth and it's the reality of business is that if you're not making six figures per year, if you're making 50K per year, you are a $50,000 dollar per year entrepreneur. If you're making a hundred thousand dollars per year, you're a six figure entrepreneur. If you're not making a hundred thousand dollars per year, you have not become a six figure entrepreneur getting to seven figures. Like I did in my first five years, I had to become a seven figure entrepreneur. So what you'll find is that within your first six figures, you usually need to learn consistency, discipline. You need to learn time management, which are the foundational skills in order to get you to your first six figures by just focusing on doing the right activities. Well, to get to seven figures, that's where you need to start leveraging key principles like creating leverage, creating a team, outsourcing certain things, understanding your dollar per hour activities and how you could start to scale your business by creating systems and processes and leveraging marketing on a bigger scale. So you really have to reflect and say, okay, right now I'm making X amount, maybe $50,000 per year. You have to be honest with yourself because change starts with you being honest with yourself saying that means because it does, I am a $50,000 per year realtor. So be honest and say, okay, knowing that, what do I need to do to change? What needs to be done differently? What holes do I need to plug in my bucket? And chances are, if you're not yet making six figures, you're not following through with the commitments you make to yourself. You are not consistent with the activities you know you need to be doing. You're not that good at time management, which is leaving you to being busy not productive. And then as you start to break six figures, if you're not at the seven figure per year mark, you have not yet created leverage in your business for lead generation, your personal brand, and how you're getting compensated. You are probably a one man show and have not yet built out a proper team. And you were probably lacking systems and processes. So start being honest with yourself, be aware of who you become right now, but be aware of where you need to go and who you need to become in order to get to that next level. Number four is that you're going to suck at at everything in the beginning and that's just genuinely okay. So one of the things I see a lot of people getting held back with is that they understand the importance of video, for example, and they know they need to be doing it, but they really struggle mentally, whether it be consciously or subconsciously, because they might not want to admit it. They're afraid of looking stupid. They're afraid of sucking at something because most entrepreneurs are pretty good at something. So they're used to doing well. And now when you start looking at leveraging AI, leveraging video, leveraging social media, paid ads, all of these new skill sets that you need to develop, you're just genuinely going to suck in the beginning, but you have to understand that that's okay because you have to start somewhere. So knowing that it's better to just get the sucky part out of the way as quickly as possible so that you can develop the skill set and become good. Just think back to your childhood, right? When you started riding a bike, you sucked in the beginning, but you kept going because you wanted the outcome of being able to ride without the training wheels or one of your parents holding the seat, right? So you kept getting the repetitions in. So to bring that full circle, the formula for getting better at something is skill volume time. Well, in the beginning, your volume of repetitions and your time into the activity is zero. So your skill set is zero. 
But over time, as you overcompensate on volume and as you start to get more repetitions in the activity, your skill set increases. Inevitably, the output gets better. So all that you need to do is get the reps in put more time into the activity, eventually you'll get good. You just have to accept the fact that anytime something new happens, you're not gonna be that good, but again, that's okay. Number five is that counting other people's money is one of the quickest ways to failure and having anxiety. What I mean here is that comparison is the death of joy. And what I see a lot of agents falling victim to is that they're looking at all these other agents on social media that have the car that they want, the house that they want, the income that they want, the you know vacations or trips that they want, and you're constantly auditing what other people are doing and the success that they are having. And by taking time away from your own business to look at what other people are doing, comparing yourself to them, which comparison again is the death of joy, ultimately, you're just taking time away from doing the activities you should be doing to get that for yourself. So you have to understand two things is that the only thing that matters is you are getting better every single day. And if you can honestly say to yourself that every single day, you're consistently getting just 1% better by the end of a year, five years, it's almost inevitable that you're going to be better than almost everybody else. And the second thing that you need to understand is social media is a highlight reel. The majority of people that are on there that are posting things, Half of their cars are rented, half of the houses are other people's, half of the vacations are not even theirs. And you have to just understand that there's a lot of vanity that goes on there. So to compare yourself with somebody else's highlight reel, when you're making it seem like that is their reality and comparing it to your reality, you're just doing a disservice to yourself, distracting yourself and giving yourself anxiety for no legitimate reason. So what I do is I just don't look at anybody else, whatever they're doing. I know what I need to do. And as long as I do what I know I need to do every single day for months on end, for years on end, for five years like I did, it's guaranteed that you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. Number six is that consistency is a key, but with a caveat. So we always hear this all the time. Consistency is king or consistency is queen or whatever the situation is. And there's some validity to that. Consistency is super important. I'm consistent on my channel, which is why I've done pretty decent and I'm consistent with anything that I'm committed to. However, you have to be consistent with intent. And what I mean by that is you can put out videos every single week for the next five years. And if you don't know how to properly optimize your videos, you don't know how to look at your content unbiasedly and compare it to other videos that are performing well, and you don't know how to look at the data in order to guarantee that you're focusing on the right content, you're just making assumptions, you will be in the exact same place, even though you've been consistent five years from now as you are today might be a little bit better, but it's not gonna be where it could be in any way, shape or form. So what you need to do is be consistent, but with intent of always growing, always improving, and always being able to look at things through an unbiased lens to make sure that you're not just doing the activity consistently, you're doing the right activities in the right way consistently. And that's what's going to lead you to mass momentum and seven figure success. That leads to number seven, which is being unbiased is one of the most powerful skill sets that you can ever have. And I'll give you a couple different ways to look at this. I've got a full video on it. So if you want that, just drop a comment below and I go into more depth, but being unbiased is essentially just putting yourself in the shoes of somebody else. So what I'm referring to here is that when you're going to run a Facebook ad, for example, the litmus test that I was used before I click go on the ad and publish it is I look at that ad and say if this ad landed on my screen and I was just a member of the general public not in real estate didn't know who you were what you've achieved or what you've done would I click on the ad would I go so far as to put in the correct information knowing some realtor is going to follow up with me and would I even respond to that person when they reach out because the value is so strong and oftentimes what you'll see is that you wouldn't click on your own ad or if you look at social media content whether it be short form or long form, if that video landed in front of you and you didn't know who you were, what you're from or anything like that, would you click on the video and watch it? Would you like it? Would you go so far as to comment on it? Would you share it with somebody else? Would you even go so far as to click on the profile, subscribe or follow that person? And what you'll see is that oftentimes you wouldn't even click on your own content. So how can you expect other people to do it as well? So being able to put yourself in the lens of the unbiased or the consumer behavior is a really powerful skill set because that can guarantee that your content will perform well because you're thinking from somebody else's unbiased perspective. Number eight, if you win today, tomorrow will take care of itself. One of the things that I see so many people do is that they 
They wait till January every year, and every year they set these big astronomical annual 12 month goals. Well, that's good, but let's go a little bit further and say 12 months is too far to calculate that you're on track to something. So we need to reverse engineer it to quarters or like the book you've probably heard of the 12 week year, because it's a long enough time to get things done, but a short enough time to measure it and see if you're on track to hitting that success. Well, going a step further, breaking it down to a weekly routine, but the way that you're going to win is if you just focus on the day because at the end of the day if you're focusing on the right income producing needle moving activities like prospecting lead generation follow-up and nurturing and educating yourself those are basically the only activities you ever need to do which is getting clients servicing clients and nurturing clients any of the activities that fall into those buckets as long as you're doing those activities every single day and again prospecting is in there you can guarantee that tomorrow will take care of itself. And if you just take care of today, every single day and do the right activities every single day, those 12 month goals will come to life. The difficulty is you look at 12 months and say, oh, I've got 12 months to do it. And you don't really do what you need to do today or tomorrow or next week. And you say, oh, I've still got like 11 months left and then six months and then four months and then one month and you realize there's no hope to hitting your goals. You need to win the day and if you can win every single day, the rest of it will take care of itself. That goes to number nine, which is focusing on being productive, not busy. You probably can relate to this, which is there's many times where you put in this enormous day, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 hours into your business and you get to the end of the day, you're exhausted, but you just sit back and think to yourself, why does it feel like my business didn't grow at all? Well, you feel like your tires are spinning and you're moving nowhere because of the fact that you're usually focusing on busy activities, not productive activities. So you're looking at spending all this time on browsing on social media or creating things on Canva instead of prospecting. You're spending time going for coffees with lenders or lawyers instead of following up with your database. You're spending all this time just playing around on the MLS or doing some sort of random research instead of learning how to lead generation better or how to follow up and practicing your scripts. So what you'll see is that it genuinely doesn't take a whole lot of time throughout the day to build a seven figure business. You just have to make sure you're focusing that time on productive activities, not ones that are just busy. Number 10, leverage is the key to growth and this is the number one thing that got me to seven figures which is leverage of prospecting or lead generation leverage of the compensation plan and leverage of my overall business in terms of the opportunity with my personal brand so this was a big decision which is when it ended up coming to exp realty and a lot of people hear that and they make their own assumptions because they're letting their ego and emotion get in the way and they're hearing things fragmented information from people who have no idea what they're talking about but when you start looking at this opportunity when you look at leverage of prospecting, I started going from door knocking, which is one to one business growing one conversation at a time to leveraging things like YouTube, which is conversations 24 seven, 365, as long as you put out the right kind of video. Well, we look at the leverage of my personal brand and the compensation plan. Well, at my previous brokerage, whenever we close a deal, I get commission at EXP. I got commission in company stock at my past brokerage. Every agent will do this. Whenever somebody reaches out to you and says, Mike, I just got my license. Where do you think I should go? Or Mike, I'm unhappy with my current brokerage. Where do you think I should go? You will always tell them your brokerage. Well, I did that with a past brokerage, helped a ton of people join there. I got $0 for doing it, added the brokerage a ton of money and nothing came of it. Well, I was also geographically restricted. Well, now that I could do that at this brokerage, but financially prove why it's the best opportunity for agents of any brokerage in North America. Well, I have agents from all over the world that are now being able to reach out, partner with me, get all of my best training tools and resources, daily mastermind calls, one-on-one -on -one support for free but now I can get compensated from it from the money that comes from the brokerage and the agent doesn't have to pay a dime. So I started to amplify the leverage of how I'm getting compensated compared to a different brokerage. 
And then you look at your personal brand and anybody that's putting out social media content is building a personal brand. And you can almost guarantee that the majority of the people that are following you are not in your local market. Well, if you're at a traditional brokerage, you're limiting yourself and basically saying you don't care about scaling your business or getting compensated as much as humanly possible for the time you're putting into your business, which is a key principle of a seven figure entrepreneur. Well, when you look at this brokerage, as you build your personal brand and more people from different markets want to be in alignment with you and be able to get your training now at this brokerage, it created leverage, giving people the opportunity to do that. So that was one of the biggest keys to going from six to seven figures or broke to seven figures, which was being able to create leverage of different aspects in my business. Number 11 is do the things that suck as quickly as possible. So you can enjoy the things that are fun for as long as possible. You see all kinds of agents, especially in my local market that are saying, well, Mike just put out videos all day. Well, I've earned the right to put out videos all day. Let me explain in two different ways. Number one, I door knocked every single day for three hours a day for six months straight in the rain, in the snow, in the dark, in every type of weather, every single day in order to build momentum, to get listings, to build my business and become a top producer. I put my time in to the trenches of prospecting. Also, I've put out two videos a week every single week for five years straight. So when you start looking at that, yes, you can get to the point where you can start putting out content, but I needed to get paid in the beginning. I couldn't rely on free videos. I had to get business now. So I did the things that suck as quickly as possible because I understood that I could door knock three hours a day, every day for six months and never have to do it again. Or I could door knock one hour a day for 18 months, seven days a week, or I could door knock one hour a day, three days a week for 36 months, three years. So you can see how I went from three years to six months just by condensing time, by doing what sucks as quickly as possible so that now I can do what I enjoy and what is fun for me, which is putting out content for as long as possible. Number 12, focusing on health is crucial. It is so, so important. If you know my routine, I wake up at 4 a.m. every day, I go to the gym by five, and usually I do a second workout in the evening. I focus on my health, what I put into my body, the things that I eat, what I drink, and what I don't drink, in order to make sure that I'm always getting better and staying in shape. Because the worst thing that you could do is get out of shape, like many of us have done before, including myself, or even get to the point where you build all the success you're making seven figures per year, but you're obese, you're far overweight, you have bad health, you can't run with your kids or your grandkids, you struggle to travel, you can't hike, you can't explore because you're out of shape. So it is so, so important to take care of your health because your body's your temple. Without your health, you genuinely have nothing. The money's irrelevant, right? So when you start looking at this, it is really important not just to be able to enjoy the fruit of your labor, but in order to even get there. Because when you look at the stamina, people say all the time, well, Mike, you're going to burn out doing 18 hours a day every single day. Well, I've done it for seven years straight. And in the first five that got me to seven figures, I didn't burn out because I was taking care of myself, putting in good things to my body, listening to my body. And that allowed me to build momentum. But it starts with, again, if you've got a Lamborghini like I have, you want to put premium fuel in, not regular, because that's what's going to allow the engine to perform at its highest quality. Well, that's what you need to do with yourself is treat yourself like an exotic car and say, what type of fuel are you putting into yourself? Are you putting garbage? Are you putting standard fuel or are you putting premium so that you can operate as efficiently as humanly possible? Number 13 is incredibly powerful, which is that if you learn from the no's and you win from the yeses, it's impossible for you to lose. But let me give some context to that. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to put out content. They're going to run ads, they're going to prospect and they're going to get told no, or the videos are going to flop or their content isn't going to connect or whatever happens in terms of a negative outcome. But where a lot of people go wrong is they take that personally and they look at it as a failure. Well, if you look at the nose as learning, so if that video didn't perform, why didn't it perform? Don't just say, hey, that sucks. I wish it did better. I'm terrible at this. Say, what can I learn from that? If you get the door slammed on your face or if you get hung up on, think, what could I have done differently to approach that better? No matter what you're doing, if you can learn every single time you get a no or something doesn't work out or you have some sort of letdown and it doesn't go as planned, 
Well, that means you're winning because you're learning about how to get better so that you don't do it again. And if you win from the yeses, which is when it does work out, you're obviously winning. That means you're always winning. It's impossible to lose. So you really have to reframe your perspective and understand what is happening and how are you perceiving the different things that are happening through the course of your business and not just look at failures as letdowns or obstacles or things that are telling you that it's not possible and that you're not made for this or cut out for it. Just look at it as a learning opportunity so that you can get to the yeses, which inevitably means you're winning. And 14, finally, which is that you have to make a ton of sacrifices and it's not going to be easy. I know there's a lot of people that sugarcoat things in this industry, especially a lot of coaches and people on YouTube making it seem like it's easy, but it's not easy to get seven figures, which is why that's the top 1% in the industry. If it was easy, everybody could do it. But for the first three years of my journey, I didn't take a single vacation. I didn't take a single day off. I went to no birthday parties. I went to no patio beers on a sunny afternoon like it is literally as I'm recording this video. I could be outside enjoying the weather right now with friends on the patio, enjoying the sun, which we get like two months of the year here. But instead, I'm in here being consistent, disciplined, embracing delayed gratification, and still putting out videos even when I don't have to, because I'm also humble enough to know that all of this could disappear tomorrow, you never know. So it's really important to understand that it's not for everybody. I know it's for you if you're watching this, especially if you made it to the end of this video, but just realize that it's going to take massive amounts of sacrifice, but what I would much rather do is sacrifice five years of my life than the next 50 years of my life, always chasing the next deal, never living up to my potential, and always dreaming of what that dream life could look like instead of living it. So if you made it to this far, drop a comment below and say, I am the next millionaire and I want to see you actually achieve it. So I will reply to those comments and I will document it. And I want to see you hit seven figures like I did within the next five years. If you have any other questions, drop a comment below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you at the million dollar mark.